Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another video. I am Lytica Marek and this <coughs> excuse me is going to be my official let's play for Fallout 4. Now I've streamed the game once uh, for two and a half hours give or take. <coughs> I've played the game once for about the same uh, like testing survivor difficulty and stuff and I've got up in the midst of uploading that on YouTube to my uh, small video channel. See, I'm officially now having my main channel as a short video and my alt channel as a long video. So I may not have the same Let's Plays going on both channels. I may stick to like small videos for certain ones and longer videos for others. Like I want this Fallout to be episodic, to be 40, 50, maybe even 60 minutes long. A good solid episode where things get done. Although where the things get done may be me running around and, um, well, digging around in people's trash for bobbleheads and nuts and screws. I am going to be playing it on survival difficulty. Um, I really, really wish you could turn the, the de controller m style and mouse accelerate. Well, the mouse acceleration style controller acceleration off because that will probably screw me up quite a bit but uh, yeah I have an idea for the backstory of the main character his name's going to be Alexander he um, he joined the military at uh, the tender age of 17 probably a little bit before he was supposed to be allowed to but he um, he was really inspired during a recruitment drive so he went and joined the Marines and after two tours, he ended up learning how to use power armor and became a, a mechanized unit. He was discharged from the military for medical leave or maternity leave, paternity leave or whatever that's called. I've never had children so I really don't know. But that's where we are now. He married his childhood sweetheart Nora, who was also in the Marines. Uh, medic, I believe. I'm not sure what I'm going to decide on that side, but uh, yeah. Also, no idea what I'm going to make him look. I may actually stick with the main, uh, the official character, the one you start with, just give him some slight alterations. Because I kind of like doing that in games like this. I like, I think of my own background, I stick with the character, like uh, the official cam people have created. Because they tend to look a hell of a lot better and more natural than the ones I make. Yeah. So let's con well, let's start the game. And sorry if I'm speaking with a, a bit of a lisp, or I do have one, but I've also still got the back end of a cold, and uh, so I'm still fairly bunged up. I may get a frog in my throat and need to cough a lot, so I'll be muting my microphone. And oh, that's a scary thought. Have I got my microphone muted? No, I haven't. Thank God for that. So I'll be shutting up and we'll be starting the game. And sorry for the rather loud click. I wish it didn't click so loud, but my headset does. changes.
in the year 1945, my great-great-grandfather, serving in the army, wondered when he'd get to go home to his wife and the son he'd never seen. He got his wish when the U.S. ended World War II by dropping atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The world awaited Armageddon. Instead, something miraculous happened. We began to use atomic energy not as a weapon, but as a nearly limitless source of power. People enjoyed luxuries once thought the realm of science fiction. Domestic robots, fusion-powered cars, portable computers. But then, in the 21st century, people awoke from the American dream. Years of consumption led to shortages of every major resource. The entire world unraveled. Peace became a distant memory. It is now the year 2077. We stand on the brink of total war. And I am afraid. For myself. For my wife. For my infant son. Because if my time in the army taught me one thing, It's that war, war never changes. War never changes. You're gonna knock him dead at the veterans hall tonight, hon. You think? Absolutely. Now get ready and stop hogging the mirror. Right. And by that rather loud click, you will realize I am back. And I'm going to be testing something a little bit. I want to see how the game volume is compared to my voice, so I'm going to be turning my uh, phone up. Hold on. Well, couldn't really tell the difference, so yeah. <laughs> Let's check the default faces. That actually looks a bit like a mate of mine. Looks a bit like Ollie Steele. I wonder if that's the character he's gone with. Quite like, I quite like this one. I don't know why. He looks like an Alexander. But then, honestly, so does this guy. But, but yeah, this is the official guy, so we're going to have this. I'm just going to do some extra stuff for the faces and the extras and stuff. Oh, that's the face I fell in love with. Oh, you're making me blush. Let's get rid of all the the blemishes, we don't need them. I may give him a few scars, but... If there's one negative for playing it through this way, is I can't really edit the clicks of my controller out. <laughs> Not bad. Not bad. So if you do hear them, I do apologise. Holy. 
Holy crap. He really could make the Joker. He could probably make Ezio as well. So I think I will have something small. Ooh, that's not small, that's big. <laughs> yeah. Sorry mate, but you have been attacked by a tiger. Okay then, so... I guess we won't have damage then. <laughs> Let's change the hairstyle. It's funny how it changes completely from that look to that look. It just completely changes the look of the face. I don't know why. Slick and Sneezy. Sleazy, not Sneezy. Yes, a hairstyle called Slick and Sneezy. Don't know why, I actually quite like this hairstyle. I think in the future I am going to look forward to the hairstyles they add in the game because none of them really really push out at me. Well, call out to me. You have such a strong chin. Yeah, not bad. Such a cute nose. Yeah, I'm just going through the pieces now and finding just little bits to. What do you change. think, Hunch? Roguishly handsome or handsomely roguish? Oh, looking good. Looking good, if I do say so myself. Well, you would say so yourself, dear Alexandra. Alexander. Oh, mustache. Very cool. Uh, th there's no mustache there. There could be, but there's not. I clean up pretty nice. I love that face. Mm, yeah, that'll do. <laughs> I'm, like I said, I'm not going to change it too much from the default. One thing I will do though is change Nora into a redhead. What can I say? Alexander likes the redheads. And how is it? Uh, yeah, like this. And call that change. You get a haircut yesterday? <laughs> yesterday? He just. Uh, I'll also see about the different styles we have. No apologies. I 
I was going to say, I quite like the look of Unscrupulous, but I quite like the look look of um, Wendy the Welder as well. Looks sophisticated. But who am I kidding? I don't know what's sophisticated or not. <laughs> I have the best hairdresser, I swear. Um... Not that you could change the extras. I think it'd be yes. Makeup is an extras. I would think you'd be able to uh, increase the darkness of the lipstick, but it doesn't appear to be it, so... Let me just slide in here. Slide in here. Your cheeks, I don't know, they feel a bit... a bit rosy. There's something different. What is it? Yep, you know, I think I think this is it, yeah. This will be our characters. I thought I turned auto saving and most of the stuff off. Hun. Hmm, just getting ready. Okay. Feel free to uh just get ready then. I'll um give you some privacy. <laughs> Mr. Handy and Mr. Handy Fuel. Abraxo for all your cleaning needs. Yeah, I'll let Codsworth take care of it. <laughs> well, if you've got a a robot to do your laundry and stuff, you let it do ah, your laundry. Good morning, sir. Your coffee. 173.5 degrees Fahrenheit. Brewed to perfection. And today's newspaper just delivered. Grognak the Barbarian in the Jungle of the Bat Babies. My favorite. Hmm. More of the same. Hey, hon. Nervous? Don't be. Everyone's gonna love this speech. Now, who left those here? You know, I was nervous at first, but Codsworth's really good with Sean. Yes. Quite nice of him. Um, I'm not so sure about those uh, trousers, dear. Maybe you should uh, untuck it. Well, untuck them. Them. Nuka Cola. Ice cold. Saddle up Salisbury steak. Graded A. Mmm, steak. I'm so proud of her. Good old USA. USA, USA, even though I'm British. Can you get that? Good morning, Voltec calling. Um, good morning. Good morning. Isn't it? Just look at that sky out there. <clears throat> you can't begin to know how happy I am to finally speak with you. I've been trying for days. It's a matter of utmost urgency, I assure you. What's so important? Why, nothing less than your entire future. If you haven't noticed, sir, this country has gone to heck in a handbasket. If you'll excuse my language, the big kaboom is... It's inevitable, I'm afraid. And coming sooner than you may think. If you catch my meaning... Now, I know you're a busy fellow, so I won't take up much of your time. 
time being a, uh, mm, a precious commodity. I'm here today to tell you that because of your family service to our country, you have been pre-selected for entrance into the local vault. Vault 111. Making it sound a little more grand than it needs to be there, dude. But uh, yeah, sorry for snorting that, and uh, his skin looks a little bit too tanned. I think a shade lighter. Slightly. But there's room for my entire family, right? Of course, of course. Minus your robot, naturally. In fact, you're already cleared for entrance. It's just a matter of verifying some information. Don't want there to be any holdups in the unforeseen event of <laughs> total atomic annihilation. <laughs> Won't take but a moment. Tell me more about this vault. Oh, it has all the amenities of the modern home, I assure you. Not to mention total protection from nuclear radiation and hostile mutants. A better future underground. It's not only our mission, it's our passion. So, just the hostile mutants then. The rest of them get a free pass. Sure, let's do it. Splendid! Splendid. Now, uh, let's see. Our name will be... Ah, oh, there it is. Alexander. We have free strength, uh, four perception, five endurance, uh, five or six charisma, five of that, two of that, and two luck. Um, I could probably change some others later, but uh, we'll go with that. Although I'm tempted to lower endurance and put it on perception. Or even put it to luck. Or even put it to strength. It's that is so much. Let's put it to agility. Yeah. If if you're thirsty, f you you don't know, just throw it on agility. Wonderful. That's everything. Uh, just gonna walk this over to the vault. Congratulations on being prepared. Um. Thanks again. Hey, it's peace of mind. That's worth a little paperwork, right? For you and Sean, no price is too high. <laughs> Good answer. I have my moments. Huh? We should take Codsworth to be service soon, don't you think? Sean has been changed, but he absolutely refuses to calm down. I think he needs some of that paternal affection you seem to be so good at. Hey, Codsworth. You heard Codsworth. Mr. Alexander, if I may, Sean requires your personal attention. A boy needs his father, after all. Okay, I'll go uh, see what the old scamp needs. And shut the doors. Actually, I'll go turn the radio off before I get copyrighted on YouTube. We really need to get those vacation photos developed. What is with me and not shutting doors behind us? Give me a bad habit, that can be. <laughs> Ooh, it's a teddy bear. Oh, it's a nice teddy bear. You know, strange. Nora, dear, are we performing some kind of strange bear rituals? Huh. How'd you get on the floor, Mr. Bear? Will either be greatest spelling or greatest smashing blocks together. Either of the two. Wonder what Sean will grow up to be. How are the two most important men in my life doing? Pretty good. He loves them. Hey, how's my little guy? Much better now, huh? Listen, after breakfast? I was thinking we could head to the park for a bit. Weather should hold up. Yeah, sounds like fun. Sir, mom, you should come and see this. Codsworth, 
What's wrong? <laughs> hey, hon. Go find out. What's wrong with Codsworth? Well, I don't think it's a short followed circuit. By, yes, followed by flashes, blinding flashes, sounds of explosions. We're uh, trying to get confirmation. What? We seem to have lost contact with say? our affiliate stations. We do, oh, no. we do have. We do oh, have coming God. in. That's what's uh, going on. Confirmed reports. Hey, I repeat, confirmed Sir, reports of nuclear you. detonations in New York and Pennsylvania. My God. Oh my God. We, we need to get to the vault now. I've got Sean. Let's go. You go. I'll follow in case Residents something happens. Of Sanctuary Hills. If you are registered, evacuate to Vault One Eleven immediately. on the list infant adult male adult female okay go program. ahead thank you good luck ma'am follow me God, come on sign. what's going to happen me. to all those people follow outside me. the gate we're doing everything we can now keep moving this step way. on the platform in the center come on honey I don't have time to waste Almost there. We're gonna be okay. I love you. Both of you. We love you too. Oh my god! Hold on! thinking about that you're safe now Every hey there head inside just up the stairs there just up there okay then come on Nora this way um this way there not back up the elevator that, that'd be a bad idea hey hello there once we seal the vault we'll all be getting to know each other a lot more Right Here right you are. There. Head down the Email. hall there. Those are good. Good. Right. Hey there. Just step over to the table. Looks fine. Over there. Take a seat. Take a vault seat, then head down the hall. You'll need your suits before we can take you further. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, thanks. What now? Just follow the doctor here. He'll show you where to go. All right, you three. Follow me. Okay, lead on, Doc. See? This is our new home. <clears throat> oh, you're gonna love it here. This is one of our most advanced facilities. Not that the others aren't great, mind you. It's gone. Our home. Wonderful. Everything Sir. we had. How long do you We're think we'll be down here? 
move along? Oh, we'll be going over all that in orientation. Just a few medical items we have to get through first. Good fit, don't you think? Yeah, checking the everyone off the list as they come in. Hey there. Just follow the guy. Right? That was friendly of him. I hope you'll see hey there. Your new home. Guess we're some of the lucky ones, right? Whew. Excuse me. Just follow your guy. He'll get you all situated. Hey, just gotta let Vault Tech handle things from here, I guess. Excuse just me. Step in here just follow and your put your vault suit. He'll step you through the process. Who's my little guy? I'm not going far. I'll just be over there. That looks like a there terrifying See? dummy. Daddy's not going far. All set? Just step inside and put on your vault suit. Hey, hon. I think he's better. You go ahead. Hey there. That was a nuke. A goddamn nuke. Hey there. Take your time. We've got all day. And this one? Okay. Decontamination pod. Probably did get a bit of splash radiation, so probably a good thing. The pod will decontaminate and depressurize you before we head deeper in the vault. Just relax. <sighs> Time for a whole new life. Make Where are they all going? Secure. Occupant vitals. Normal. Procedure complete. In five. Oh, four, son of a three. Two. One. I think I could have done that joke better. <laughs> this is the one. Here. Open it. Gonna make him pay for that. Be a release! Come on, come on, come on! Oh God! I'll find who did this, and I'll get Sean back. I promise. Cryogenic array, let's see what's up with it. 
Cryogenic array offline, premature termination resulting in system failure. Isolated manual and remote override detected. Controls disabled. Is this a side effect from whoever disabled it before to get my son out? Life support offline, premature termination resulting in system failure. Yeah. Pod occupant status. Pod C1 to uh, 6 all dead. So it is unknown remote override. Remote override engaged. So someone let me out? Okay, so no. Hard door manual override engaged. Yes, yeah, so somebody let me out. They all seems to have seems to have they all seem to have died because of the six years it caused a life support failure. hard as it is to leave, we can't really stay here. Oh god. Why would Voltaire do this? You can't be the only one left. Hello? Anyone? Ah, another terminal. See if there's anything different here. I somehow doubt it though. Cryogenic array offline, previous determination resulting in system failure. Yeah, the same. Life support, uh, the same. Offline, previous determination. Pod status. I bet everybody is also dead. For the same reasons. Yeah, cause of asphyxia. You would think they would have had at least an automatic override, so if it looks like the pod's about to break down, it would release its occupant. So I can kind of understand the reason behind this vault. Although, why the people <coughs> in it are in it, I don't know. I mean, a pod which would put people in suspended animation. You'd expect to put the best and brightest in it. You know, scientists, physicists, doctors. Sure, we're distinguished military, but still, we're not exactly the best and brightest. What the hell is that? Okay. I some have a fi somehow have a feeling we're going to come across them, so uh, yeah. Being armed is probably a good idea, even if it's just a baton. Stim pack, coffee mug. I'm going to take anything and everything, because I'm sure I'll find a use for it somewhere. Welcome to Robco Industries Terminal Link. Clearance Vault Tech Security. Vault 111 Security Instruction. Confidential, confidential, confidential. Security eyes only. Violation VTP 01011. Vault 111 is designed to test the long term effects of, susp of suspended animation on unaware human subjects. Security staff are responsible for maintaining installation integrity, monitoring science staff activity. Under no circumstances, are staff allowed to deviate from the assigned duties. Insubordination or interference with, with vault operations 
Our capital offences security staff are authorised to use lethal force. So I've got a lot of saliva in my mouth for no reason at all. Maybe it's another side effect of my cold. <coughs> Resident admittance. I'm sorry if it makes talk, listening to me talk almost painful. Upon activation notice from vault -Tec, all personnel are required to report to the entry area and assist with admittance of vault resident. Security personnel will maintain order to ensure that no personnel or residents attempt to evacuate the vault. If the vault was used in a nuclear thing like it is, I'm pretty sure none of them were going to want to leave. Research staff will be responsible for residents intake and escort each to the assigned cryogenic pod. Residents not accounted for in the manifest should be asked to step outside uh, to step aside and detained forcefully by security if necessary. Once all residents have been sealed into their preservation chambers, dispose of any detainees, vault entryway must remain sealed under any circumstances. That's harsh, man. If you're not on the list, you're not coming in. And if you do get in, you're getting killed. Yeah. Members of the research team must uh, daily monitor the vital signs of cryogenic preserved uh, residents. Cardio, pulmonary and cognitive activity in particular must be recorded hourly. Life-saving intervention is only permitted if greater than 80% of the resident population has perished while in cryogenic suspension and must not interrupt suspension. Independent research is encouraged and left to the user dis uh, to oversee his discretion. So basically, they don't even see us as human beings. I didn't fight in a war for this shit. Security protocol are to be carried out on a constant eight hour rotation. Security priorities include monitoring for signs of intrusion. Yep, like that's going to happen. Checking for atmosphere leaks, settling disputes among personnel, enforcing a regulation set forth by the overseer, enforcing a regulation set forth by Vault Tech. Well, that was interesting. Facility service and maintenance. Due to the nature of Vault 111, personnel will be expected to perform duties outside of their normal qualifications such as janitorial duties and food preparation. The exact distribution of these roles is left to the overseer's discretion. So you piss off the overseer, you get on latrine duty. The all clear and evacuation. All clear message. Following a nuclear event, vault -Tac will monitor hazards such as radiation levels, enemy invasion, subsequent attacks and other factors. Once conditions are deemed safe, this terminal will receive an all clear notice. Upon receiving the all-clear notice, vault personnel may be evacuated at overseer's discretion. Disregard any notices from organisations or individuals not associated with vault including government and military. Residents are not to be disrupted or evacuated. vault will attend to their needs remotely once Vault 111 staff have been evacuated. Mandatory shelter period. Vault 111 is classified as a short-term assignment. Non-resident personnel are expected to carry out research duties and basic maintenance of the vault while awaiting the all-clear signal to evacuate. In the absence of an all-clear message from vault Tech, the overseer may elect to evacuate staff after a mandatory shelter period of 180 days of containment. Under no circumstances may Vault 111 staff evacuate during the shelter period unless receiving the all-clear message from vault Tech. Um. 180 days. 180 days post nuclear fallout may as well be 180 seconds. Well, maybe a little more than that because the whole nuclear fire thing, but still. It still results in you either growing a second head or just flat out dying. Probably both.
I say I've completely missed that then, but now I've got it on the second one. Roaches? What the hell? It's a giant roach, mate. It's. I have a feeling you're gonna see a lot worse than a giant roach. 